Hello, this is Karen and I have another video for you today for which I am super nervous and um, I'm trying to remember to do everything right. Um, I am going to be doing a review of the Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolor paints. Um, I've done a couple of watercolor paint reviews in the past. They didn't really, I don't know, I wasn't really happy with them. So I basically used my colored pencil uh, reviews that I have been doing. Um, I've been doing colored pencil reviews for about two years and about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I created a whole new system and there'll be a playlist to that colored pencil review. And I wanted to use a similar system to do a review of the watercolor paints. So this is going to be the first video doing those reviews using the new system. So what I have here is I have the paints that I will be reviewing. This will be the Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor paints. Um, and what I do is um, after that, we're going to be doing the swatching. Um, after the swatching, so I'm going to talk about the paints, do the swatching, um, show you some pieces that I have made with these paints. And um, at the very end, we're going to be doing a comparison chart that I created this comparison chart to try to compare these different paints and to give you as much information about these paints and to help you sort of decide um, what is right for you. Um, what I have been doing for my colored pencil reviews and what I'm going to continue to do is I'm basically going to compare the Windsor, the whatever I'm currently reviewing to every other paint set that I have gotten access to um, and that that way it will help you sort of see the comparisons, see the differences. And that worked out really well for my colored pencil reviews. So I'm hoping that a similar system will work out really well here. Um, in addition to that, because this is watercolor paints, I have also added um, a mixing chart that I pre-made the mixing chart in advance. Um, if you guys don't, you know, if you guys are new, um, I have low vision. So doing a lot of painting while I'm on camera is really challenging for me. So I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of painting on camera, but it's basically going to be mainly the swatching and talking about the properties of the paints, like as I swatch them, but I did pre-make some, um, mixing charts and I have some huge mixing charts and I'll be, you know, um, talking a little bit about the paints by comparing the different mixing charts that I made. I didn't make mixing charts for all these paints, but I did make mixing charts for a lot of them. And we're going to go through those. Um, so I think that's it. And then, um, I'll be right back. And when I come back, we can get started and we'll be talking about the, you know, some introductory things about the Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor paints. And then from there we'll do the swatching and blah, 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 as I mentioned before. All right. Um, uh, let's get started. All right, so let's start talking a little bit about the paints. These is the Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolor paints, and this is a little, um, a little, this is one of the mixing charts that I made. Like I said, I didn't make mixing charts for all the paints that I have, but I made them for a fair number. Um, anyway, so the, the Windsor and Newton Cotman paints are sold in sets. This is a set that I bought. They are sold in half pants, which is what these are. They are also full pants, which are twice the size of these eight milliliter and 21 milliliter tubes. They are the most affordable set is 10 to $14, which is this, this is the, the most affordable set. And it comes like this. Um, it comes already wrapped up and they also come with a brush and I lost the brush. I meant to save the brush for the review, but I actually don't know where I put the brush. I put the brush somewhere safe for the review and now I have no idea where it is. Um, anyway, and it comes with this little swatch box, um, with this little pocket box. It's actually really light and really easy to travel with. Um, and what I did is I just cut up the, the little information cards that came with it and I made my own little swatch card and I made it to fit here so that if it's here and it's easy to travel with anyway. So this is what this is. And this set is called the Skechers pocket box. Oh my God, Stewie's playing again. <sighs> He's the worst. Um, anyway, the Skechers, this is what this is called the Skechers pocket box. The most expensive set is 45 half pans for 70 plus dollars. Now that really confused me because I went to the Windsor Newton website and they have 40 colors in the range total. So I don't fully understand how the largest set has 45 colors. Um, maybe there's duplicates. I don't know. 
um, but it says that it's 45 half pants. Um, and it may be that the Windsor Newton website that I went to is the U S website and maybe in the UK, there are more colors available, but that's the information that I have here. That's the other thing. If you're new here is I do a lot of my own research. So the information you get, you know, might vary a little bit, but this is from based on my research. Um, so anyway, uh, besides that, they are also, oh, let me show you the, um, the tubes, I don't have any tubes. I don't actually own any tubes, but these are extremely affordable paints. The 21 milliliter tube goes for under $7 and the eight milliliter tube goes for under $4. Now, if you compare that to a set of Daniel Smith Lapis Lazuli or Daniel Smith Amethyst paint, both of which I got on Amazon, 15 milliliters each. They were 15 milliliters each and they were $18 for one tube of paint. So getting this entire set for $10 is a really good value, especially when you see the kind of color range that you can get. Um, so for the price, these are extremely high quality paints. Let me show you the full range. I'm just going to put these notes over here, but let me show you, um, this is not really the full range, but this is just some of the colors that you can make based on the mixing chart. So this, this one will be white and yellow. And I don't normally, I know a lot of people throw out the white, but I know that a lot of people also use white a lot. So I decided to do the white for this mixing chart. And, um, it, it was really interesting because right here you can, um, a couple of these look like they might work for European skin tones. So, um, in this range here, it looks like you might be able to use these for skin tones. So, um, so, but anyway, let me show you the full range of colors that you can see here. And they give you some really interesting, fun mixes. Like this is a really nice mix that I like. Um, and then I use this for making a sort of, I don't know, salmon-y color. Um, and some of the purples that you can get over here are really nice colors. So, um, so overall, this is actually a really fun set and there's a lot of color variation that you can make. Now, the one thing, um, and you'll see this when I mix this up is that I had to work really, really hard to get this much out of the yellow ochre. Um, the yellow ochre was just not wanting to as give well me a as lot. the yellow ochre was a lot uh, to get that yellow ochre out. Um, and I think this is a good time for me to show you one of the paintings that I literally just finished. I've been totally obsessed with the, um, with the TV movie San Junipero, which is from the show called Black Mirror. And I've literally been totally obsessed with that show, um, with that particular episode. And I think I've seen it like, I don't know, an insane number of times, but anyway, but I made this book postcard from San Junipero. Um, and I made this entirely with the Cotman sets using the paints that are in the set and to get, um, I know the colors look really pastel and for the most part, it, you know, it was pretty easy to get them to be this pastel, but this is literally, I don't know if you can see that, but this is three layers of yellow ochre to get it to be um, to get it to be this intense was three layers on this side and two on this side. Um, so it was a lot of work to get it. And that's part of, you know, that's part of where it becomes, you know, affordable paints because the, for some of the colors, the pigmentation is not quite there, but for other colors, it's fine. The phthalo blue is so on and so forth. Anyway, I think this is a good time for us to stop and we can do some color swatching and we can talk more about the colors, um, when I do the color swatching and I'll get into the, the, um, the pigment numbers and all that other stuff when I do the color swatching. So I'm going to take a break right here and we're going to do the color swatching. Okay. So, um, before we start, um, you'll see the names at the bottom, but I'm going to take a moment to talk a little bit about the hues because a lot of these colors are hue. So for example, the one that I'm doing here is the lemon yellow hue. And so these are, I did some research on the hues and from what I was able to discover is that the hues can be any number of things. They can be the pigment itself that's named in the hue, just in a slightly lesser quantity, or they can be other pigments made to mimic that the named pigment. Um, so for example, one that's popular would be like cadmium hues. And a lot of people don't use cadmiums because it's cadmium. Um, uh, another one might be, um, gamboge. Gamboge is something that is no longer in production. So you'll either get new gamboge or you'll get, um, you know, um, gamboge hue or something like that. So for this, uh, the first two colors that I did, um, cause I don't want to get too far ahead without going over the colors that I did. The first two color was lemon yellow hue. 
the next color was cadmium yellow hue and cadmium uh, yellow hue is PY97 and PY65 and this one that I'm doing right now is alizarin crimson hue and the thing about this alizarin crimson hue is as you saw I had to go in multiple times to get it to be this intense um, I did pre-wet the pans and I let them sit so as you go as I go further on and to do more of the swatchings it becomes a little bit easier to get out as much color as I did get out but there is a you know there's a risk to caking on as much as I did I mean <laughs> I don't know of another way to describe it but I did use a lot of pigment to get this level of intensity for some of the colors is that you risk making it difficult to do glazing afterwards so um so that's one of the things about these student grade paints is that you can get a lot of intensity but um you almost have to cake it on here or to do a whole bunch of light layers and um if you do a whole bunch of light layers it can then become difficult to get more layers in so that's kind of one of the drawbacks of using student grade is that they may not have as much pigment load but for some colors um, this is intense blue phthalo blue um, i found in in using phthalo blue that it worked just as well as an artist grade you know phthalo blue it was fine so the uh, viridian hue is one of those colors where you really see the effect of getting a student grade or just I just don't like Viridian um but Viridian he was even harder to re-wet that's one of the reasons why there was a really long cut to get out as much as I did um and it's pretty heavily caked on there if we're going to talk about caking on the sap green that I'm doing here was actually fine getting in out um, but it's not a very strong sap green. You see that it looks like it reminds me of the um, phthalo green light from Sennelier. Um, it's not a particularly strong color. And the color that I skipped there was one that should have been put up higher. That's the cadmium red hue. Um, and this is the um, yellow ochre that had to be really heavily caked on there. Um, the same thing with the burnt sienna and the burnt umber. Um, it doesn't look it, but there was a lot of scrubbing and a lot of going in twice. You can see me going back in there to try to get as much color in this as I possibly could. Um, and the same thing with the burnt umber. It's just pre-wetting like I did before and just going in and scrubbing out to try to get in as much. To try to make it look as intense as possible. Um, it's fine for doing the swatches, but I can tell you when I was doing the painting itself that it's a bit of a hassle and it also makes it difficult to really gauge like how much you're putting in there. Um, and it's one thing that's particularly different from working with artist grades, which is what I learned on and what I started on, um, is I find that my colors end up looking really thin because I need to get so much of it on compared to what I'm used to for the artist grade paints. Anyway, so for this part, I just wanted to take some artist grade paints and swatch them out. And I just wanted to show you um, me actually, you know, doing it because I just wanted to show you that I didn't pre-wet the paints and I didn't, you know, let the brush sit there for any length of time. I did, you know, scrub them out a little bit, but definitely not as much as I did for the, um, for the cotton watercolor paints that I, that I did. Um, anyway, the colors that you saw me do was the lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, um, and phthalo blue, all of which were Sennelier. And this last one, which is Burnt Sienna, and that is Daniel Smith. And then um, I'm going to compare that to doing the Cotman swatches in a second. Okay, so I did speed this part up just because we had already done the swatches, so I didn't want to spend that much time with them. But I'm just showing you that I'm scrubbing and it's pretty wet. So you can get um, some intensity from these colors. Well, for most of them anyway, you can see that the burnt sienna was just a pain to do. The other thing that I want to do is I wanted to show you how much color shift there is between the wet paint and the dry paint. So the burnt umber is dry and I'm just laying on some paint and you can see how intense that difference is between those two. Um, and that's a, that's a pretty serious drying shift. 
the colors look more matte and sort of less interesting once they dry. All right, so um, I have here the completed and dried swatching sheet that I made live and get um, the intensity levels to match. So I wasn't trying to, you know, I want to make sure that I gave these colors a fair hearing. Um, and you can now see how they dried and the colors are much more similar now that this is completely dry. Um, in addition to this, um, I do, before we get to the actual comparison chart, I did want to show you once again, the mixing chart of the Windsor Newton Cotman. And I wanted to compare it just very briefly to the mixing chart for some of these other colors. This is the Sakura Koi. Oh, sorry about that. This is the Sakura Koi, um, which is also student grade. And you can see that they, you know, the quality is really similar. There's a little bit more intensity in the Windsor Newton Cotman. So that's definitely a plus. Um, the Sennelier student line, which actually is my favorite student line. Um, I will definitely give away the Sakura Koi when I do the review for the Sakura Koi because they're not getting that much use in my house. Um, so I think somebody else will have a use for them. Um, I may give away the Sennelier student grade, um, but I may not. I really, these I really like. You can see that they have a similar level of intensity. Maybe some colors are more intense in the cotton set. Um, but there's also, um, there's once again that extra Sennelier or something. I think it has to do with the honey that I really like in these. And these glaze really nicely. Um, I didn't have any problems glazing with the uh, Windsor Newton cotton. By the way, all the paper that you've seen me use has been 100% cotton. So all the paper that you'll see me use for all my reviews will always be 100% cotton, 140 pound, just because I feel like that gives us a, a much more clear or fairer understanding of what we're all dealing with here. Um, and I wanted to just show you some of these comparison with some of these artist grades. Now, there are more colors in this Daniel Smith set than in this Anelier, than in the Windsor Newton Cotman set, but I just wanted just to show you so you can see the difference. Like that's why there's a price difference. I know some people are going to get triggered. Um, how can you compare the Cotman's to Daniel Smith? But the reason that I want to show you these is because if you're looking at the price for the Daniel Smith and you're saying to yourself, wow, why are those so much? That's the case. And see the difference um, in intensity throughout as well as when you get close up. Some of these mixes are just really stunning um this is probably hold on i'm gonna see if i can find the most expensive mix in this whole set and i believe it is somewhere it's this color right here this is this color right here is the most expensive combo in this whole set doesn't look that much special but anyway um i did just want to show you these two so you can see in in greater detail what the difference is um and that's not necessarily to say that the cotton set is a bad set um as you saw the the paintings that i made with the cotton set and the, you know the the tools the artist makes the tools the tools don't make the artist um and i wanted to just show you the sennelier this is my sennelier urban palette you can see that this that this collection so i picked out all the colors that are in this set this is a set that windsor newton picked out um, and you can see that this is a much less balanced set um this set here has very a lot of earthy tones a lot of dark tones um this because this is my new york city travel palette and this m graham palette is also geared towards um, more urban sketching so you'll see a lot of these super super dark tones that you don't really see in the common set um, that you get to see over here um, all right so we're done with that so now we're going to get the actual comparison charts and we're actually going to do the actual comparison all right there are <laughs> a couple more things that i forgot to mention so um this uh san junipero sketch i'm going to try to duplicate it pretty much the same way using some artist grade paints um, and that's another really good use for these because these paints are so affordable you can pr do some practice sketching with these before you move on to your artist grade paints with your more expensive um, paints or whatever and I know a lot of people use them that way so there's that so this and then um, what I'm gonna do with this is when I finish sketching this pretty much onto here I am going to be giving this away to one of the patrons at the $10 level because this new thing that I added is people at the $10 level are going to get just original paintings from me 
every other month. So I'm going to give this to somebody at the $10 level. So everybody at the $10 level will get a painting. Anyway, the other thing I want to show you, and I cannot believe we went this long without me showing you this, but this is a completed page, a uh, coloring book page that I did with the Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolor paints. And that's the only thing that I use. Um, you can see, um, now this isn't perfect because this is coloring book paper. So it's not just by its nature going to take as many layers. Um, but you can see that you do start to sort of feel um, when it's got too much paint on here to try to get the level of intensity that I wanted. Having said that, I think that they performed really well, especially since this was coloring book paper. Um, I've tried it on, you know, 100% cotton watercolor paper, mixed media paper, and I have found that when you're actually painting with them, they do perform really well. The only thing is that there's a handful of colors, the burnt sienna, the yellow ochre, and the alizarin crimson hue that are extremely difficult to rewet and to get a lot of intensity and um, i did the work off camera but you could not see how much working i had to That's do what i ended up doing when i was working with the commons and i ended up just not using the colors that were difficult to rewet um, it may not be the same if you have the two paints it might be easier with the two paints i'm not quite sure i can't speak to that um, but there's that part all right so now finally we can get out the comparison cards these are the comparison cards. i want to share you this this was made this is once again 100 percent cotton 140 pound watercolor paper this i believe is b paper and you can see that i did it on the same page that i did some painting on sennelier this was done i don't think i put the date on this but this was done earlier this year um, and you can see that it did take a fair number of layers and it worked really well. Um, but once again, you see me avoiding using those colors that were difficult to rewet. Um, I may have used a pinch of a lizard and crimson hue, but for the most part, I avoided those colors um, that were so difficult to rewet. <laughs> that's not really a way to work, but that's how I ended up working around it. Um, anyway. Having said all that, we're finally to the comparison chart. All right, finally towards the end. Okay, so this is the Windsor and Newton Cotman. Hold on, let's see if I can try to get as much of it on screen as I can. Actually, when I, when I did the colored pencil review, it was much easier to get both of them on screen, and I don't know why that was. But anyway, this is the Sakura Koi. You can see that compared to the Sakura Koi, there's definitely much more intensity on the Windsor Newton Cotman, this one here, right here is the Windsor Newton Cotman. The one behind it is the Sakura Koi, and you can see there's definitely more intensity for the Sakura Koi. Um, this is the Sennelia student grade. Um, and I would say probably that they're similar. Maybe the Sennelia student grade has more intensity for a few colors. Maybe this color, the pink probably. Um, but for the most part, they're very similar. I didn't mix the, I don't know why I didn't make the gray for this. I may have to redo this sheet because I don't like the way the colors merged on this one or this one. So I may end up redoing both of these sheets. Um, anyway, but I hate to redo that because of paper. Like I said, <laughs> this is cotton paper, expensive paper. So I don't want to redo that. But then again, that is why I have the Patreon. Okay. Oh my God. I'm going on and on. Okay. So this is the Turner's. I'm not sure why it goes straight to the, oh, I know why. Because I put these in order of color intensity as opposed to um, order of price. And you can see that the Turner artist didn't give me as much intensity as I would have hoped. In fact, they're not that far from the Cotman. I mean, they are a little bit better than the Cotman, but not really as far as I would expect given the price. The These are new to me um, and I haven't, I have, these are, I literally just got these in the mail this week. This is the St. Petersburg White Knights and these are supposed to be artist grade. And they're, I, I would say they're more in between artists and student grade. And you can see, um, you know, you can see that there's not, it's not as easy to get the colors. You can see once again, and I think that that might be something that is universal. Once again, the yellow ochre, both of these are yellow ochre. You can see that to me, that's the result of me having to work it a lot to get color intensity. 
Um, same with this. Now with um, watercolors, people do this more so with watercolors than with colored pencils, where people with colored pencils, people usually just pick the sets that they want and they stick to the sets. They may add one or two colors, but it's not unusual for people to have, you know, pretty much every color come from a different brand where people just pick out their favorite colors from specific brands. Um, I just got these as well. Um, I did an unboxing and I'll put a link up there. So I haven't spent as much time with these, but overall, as far as the artist grades ones that I have, oh my God, Stewie's playing again. <laughs> he does this every time I'm filming. Um, as far as the artist grade ones that I have, these, um, they seem to be the lightest, but I, I'm, I'm told also that these can glaze really well. So I'm going to spend more time glazing on these, um, the mission gold. I must say I was not at all impressed with the mission gold for the price I paid. Um, I just wasn't that impressed with the mission gold and that's just the first impression. I'll spend more time yeah, with, them. um, French ultramarine is really important. So that's why I go through so much work. Now, this is a, now this is a comparison I'll probably spend more time on. This is the student grade versus the artist grade Windsor Newton. And you can see that the artist grade does better, but not that much better. You can see the artist grade does do better, but, um, it, you know, it's not. I don't know. I have never, I, I was sort of, I've heard people say that the Windsor Newton artists aren't that good. And, um, I was kind of shocked by it and I didn't believe it because I've heard a lot of people say that they're exceptional. And I think this is another case where it sort of depends on what region you are in, because here in America, they're very, very expensive. They were actually just gone down recently where the set of 24 is a hundred dollars. And for a hundred dollars, um, I can definitely do better in the U S <laughs> um, and that's not really to say that there's anything wrong with these paints, but I can definitely get more color drop off or more intense layering ability than I can. By contrast, the commons, as I said, were 10 to 12 bucks. So I don't, I, I honestly, I don't see a hundred dollar difference between these two. I really don't. Um, and that's not necessarily to attack the, um, the professional way. And I checked earlier today, the same place that I paid $113 for, and they were like $98. So the price on the continent, the, um, Windsor Newton professional, which is what this one is maybe going down. And that might put it more in line with the value that they are. But for right now, um, I didn't think that they were a very good value, um, in terms of just dollars and cents. Um, this is the Sennelier artist. And the other thing that I did for these, you'll see that they, they have a similar colors. Um, and the reason that they have similar colors is that I just went to for each of them. It was a little bit of a hassle as I went to the company websites and I just looked at what colors are included in their actual 12 color sets. So that's the other thing that sets Sennelier apart is, um, if you see before, hold on to get as many of these before if you see um all of these have two yellows or a yellow and an orange um and sennelier is the first one to and i think the sennelier student grade is the same too where it gives you a yellow and an orange but then when you go to the sennelier artist grade this is one of their 12 sets this is actually very i think the first set of watercolor paints that i got was the sennelier artist grade it was set of 12 plus six free paints um, this one gives you one yellow, which I'm sure some people would be very upset about in three reds. I did not have a problem with that at all. Some people might have a problem with that. It also gave you a Payne's gray. Um, once again, that was not a problem for me, but other people might find that to be an issue. Oh, there was one more company that did something weird. Um, I think it was like the Turners or something. Um, uh, we've passed that, but I think the Turners gave you a white instead of a yellow and I added a second yellow, but anyway, um, so it's another, it gives you one yellow. Um, and I mixed both of the yellows and this is where doing this, I'm going to redo this one. I am going to redo this one. Um, this is where you can see the where the doing the mixes because even though it's a one it's a one yellow it's actually a fairly decent yellow because both of these work out really well and throughout their lines i must say i'm really impressed with the sennelia yellows they're all really really nice 
Um, you can see now the Tenelier colors aren't as vibrant as some of the other artist grade paints, but they have a really, really nice layering capability and they glaze wonderfully. Um, I've heard other people say that, you know, um, and I may have said that earlier in this video that after a certain point it becomes difficult to glaze. I've never had any difficulty glazing with Tenelier. They just pack it on. Um, so that's really great. So anyway. I just wanted to show you how it mixes the gray. It's a really nice gray here that you can get. All right, that's the Sennelier. This is the Holbein Artist. Um, and you can see that the Holbein Artist, it's really, there's a huge difference in terms of the color quality. And I don't know, once again, I didn't mix a gray here and I'm, I was being lazy. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Um, I need to get on the ball. Anyway, oh my God, we oh, spending so much time on this, but, um, um, but I just want to show you the, the difference, um, in intensity and the cleanness of the mixes, as well as obviously there's a higher life as rating for some of these artist grade paints. The, you can see, in fact, this was so intense when I did this, that I had to pack out some of this and take a little bit out. Um, and that's not a problem that I've ever had with the Winsor Newton Cotman of mixing colors that were a little bit too intense and having to add water that never really happened. Um, I must say, um, but that does happen sometimes with these artist grade paints and look at the, look at the color difference and the intense mixes with the mass tone versus the light tone. And you can see how similar they are. Um, I think the next few paints are going to be in terms of color payoff. It's going to be really night and day. Look at this. Um, some of these colors. Now the core, I did do a little bit differently because the core, they just move so much um, that I just let them move on their own. And they just they the cores are really beautiful for doing wet on wet. So that's what I did here with the core. These are the core paints. Um, but you can see once again, you're able to mix a clean gray. And we are almost at the end. All right, only two more to go. See that? We made it all the way through. Anyway, um, this is the Daniel Smith. And you can see the huge difference these Daniel Smith makes. Let's see that? It's a big, big difference. Um, the colors are slightly different, but uh, look at the, the phthalo blue. It's not only, like this is, um, it's not only more intense, but it's also cleaner. Um, and plenty for, you know, and ready for more glazing. Whereas you can see this, this has been caked on here um, and this is cleaner and you can definitely glaze more here. So anyway, so there's that. That is the Daniel Smith. And the last one is going to be the M grams, which probably are some of the strongest pigmenting colors that I had. And I had to be very careful to not use too much throughout. Um, and I still ended up using too much, I think. Look at this PB60. Um, I just ended up using too much and not even meaning to. So the, the M grams is gonna be another case where you have to be really careful and make sure that you don't use more than you intend to use because you can see the difference. And again, that's really, that's not necessarily something that's ever happened to me with the comet, but it happens to me all the time with the M grams where you need way less paint than you think you do. All right. So we've gone through all the paints. We've talked about pretty much everything. So in the end, what do I think about these paints? Um, what are my final thoughts on these paints? Um, I think that for $10, 10 to $13, um, it's really, really hard to go wrong. Um, this is a very nice usable set that somebody can get a lot of use out of for a long time. Um, and I see why it's a lot of people's first paint. Um, it is um, like this is in a heavy metal tin and this is in a lightweight plastic, uh, like a little lightweight plastic carrier. But these the little half paint. I don't know why I have a hard time. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Somebody in the comments will tell me that I'm probably doing this all wrong. Um, but I had a hard time opening this anyway. Um, so I won't be giving this away to somebody down in the comments. All you got to do is tell me that you would like to win it down in the comments and you're entered. Um, that's pretty much it. And make sure you're subscribed, obviously. But um, I, oh, this here. Oh, this, this, oh, no, no, it's back in. All right. 
So there's that. So do I recommend this? Yeah, I think for $10, yeah, this is totally a very nice starter set for you to start with. Um, I disagree with the claim that these are artist grade paints, but they are very, very good student grade paints at a very, very good price that it's really hard to beat, especially in the US. Um, let me show you this as well as this one here. This is the, this is a mix of Sennelier and um, Daniel Smith. I put 24 in here, but this is really made for 12. Um, but um, yeah, I, I don't think that if you have $10, um, $13, depending on, you know, if you get it on sale or not. Um, I don't think that it's possible to get these and be disappointed with them, um, for the 10 to $13 value. Um, I have not seen any paints that even come close to at this price. Uh, the Sennelier student grades were, I think 16, $17 is a $3 difference, but, um, and I think that that was on sale. I think their regular price now is $20. So for being almost twice the price, that's here in the US. That's the other thing is that it really depends where in the world you are. Um, if for example, you're somewhere in the world where these cost the same as say Daniel Smith, you know, get the Daniel Smith. But um, but for where I am in the world and the price affordability on these, it's, it's really hard to go wrong. So um, in the end, um, even though it felt like I was talking bad about these paints, I wasn't. I was just letting you guys know you know an honest assessment of these paints these paints are not perfect but they are an exceptional value and probably among the best paints that I've ever tried for this price in fact I'm going to go ahead and put it out there and say these are the best paints that I have tried for this price so I hope that you guys found this extremely long review helpful um, and I hope you guys like this video and if you like this video like this video don't forget to like subscribe and comment if you want to be entered into a chance to win this very lightly used set um, why am I doing this wrong I don't know why I'm doing this wrong um, just you know say that you would like to be entered to win this and I'll pick a random winner from the people who are entered. Oh, you have to be in the US. I forgot about that. Yeah, you have to be in the US because shipping internationally would exceed the value of the item. But um, if you're in the US, just mention that you'd like to win this and I will send you this along with everything that I have for it, which is the swatch card that I made, the paints and everything else. So um, yes, so like, subscribe and share if you like this video. Um, and if you are a supporter over on Patreon, thank you very much. If you are not consider checking out over there, we have a lot of, um, increasingly better, uh, rewards. Um, like I said, everybody at the $10 level will get a painting, um, by me every other month. Um, and you know, more artwork at the higher levels. Uh, and I think that's it. And stay for the cat video, stay all the way for the end of that cat video. Cause Bella was so bad. All right. Thanks. Um, have a good day and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Don't get on that paper, Bella. <laughs>